And today on the bench we have a uh, President Johnny 3 USA 12 and 24 volt. So this was sent in by President for review. So as usual, going to unbox it, going to tear the radio apart. <laughs> this is a repair bench after all. Uh, we want to see what's inside. Um, expecting the same good, you know, good quality I've been seeing out of all the other President radios. So I um, mean, like all the other President radios, you know, they have their uh, two plus three year warranty. So base two year warranty on their radios, and if you buy a President antenna at the same time you buy the radio it adds an extra three years to the warranty of your radio. So you get a total of five-year warranty on the radio. Kind of unheard of. <laughs> so let's get this thing cracked open. Now they have a couple different models of uh, AM radios. What do we have here? Ah, okay. Yeah, I do see that in a couple of the different boxes. They had the uh, pinout, which is nice. It's it's nice that they actually provide you with the pinout just in case you you know want to use another mic. But uh, anyhow, they have a couple other uh, president radios that are AM only. Um, and actually, what made me think about doing this review because they had actually sent me a president that is had actually sent me a couple radios for review and asked me to kind of spread them out. And well, this one got set over on the shelf, and I just rediscovered it with a thin layer of dust starting to form on it. And I guess they forgot they had sent it to me too because they hadn't said anything to me. Um, but I did the president Andy, and what made me think about this radio was. Somebody asked the question, what's the difference, you know, if I'm looking at buying uh, an AM only radio, what's the main differences between the President Andy and the Johnny 3? Well, I've done the review video on the Andy, so, you know, you can go watch that. But I was going to say, well, just go watch the review video on the Johnny 3, and, well, it would be kind of hard, because I've never done one on this radio yet. It's still packed. So, well, that's a new addition. That's the first time I've seen him do that. A little bit of extra protection on the uh, coax connector there. Nice little detail. <laughs> it doesn't really cost much just to scrap a cardboard taped around it, but hey, <laughs> when you're shipping something, every little bit helps. So, we'll get out the manual here. I honestly I have to look at it here. Can't remember if this one is has if the menus are very deep on this. I don't think they are. So probably won't need the manual, but still we can sh take a look at the specifications. And of course comes with your warranty card and you know, the <laughs> number one CD president sticker that comes with all of them. Some of the radios, speaking of those stickers, man, I don't know if you've seen some of the stickers that come with some of the radios. Man, they're huge. I've, I've seen the ones that are like that big. They're like, you know, like that wide. They're gigantic stickers. So... And let's get the accessories unpacked. So yeah, normal accessories, you know, mounting bracket, mic clip, little rubbery washers. Get rid of all the crinkly plastic here. Microphone. Now this is one thing. Yeah, yeah. I I I wish they. No offense to President, but if I had, it's not so much a gripe, but. If you use radios in the north, now I'm not far north, but I am, you know, Maryland, Pennsylvania border, so I'm in the Rust Belt, and it does snow here and get cold in the wintertime. Um, I have seen two different cords come with radios, and I've seen two different cords come with the same models of radios. So they, at some point in time, they've changed cords. There's this style cord, and if I turn around here and grab one of my test microphones... There's this cord. Actually, let me, before I go put my foot in my mouth, yep, they're both six pins. So, yes, both six pin cords. So, there's no difference there. It's not like there's, you know, more or less wires. So, uh, anyhow, both six pins. Notice the diameter of the cord. This microphone, okay, has a skinny cord. This one has a thick cord. This one is much more flexible. I mean, just, oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> you know, it's, and it's really springy, bounces back really easily. Where this one is stiffer, and it, it's, it's reaction, and I can tell you what's going to happen with this thing. When it's, you know, below freezing, it's going to be really stiff, because it's stiffer just, you know, in a room temperature, you know, 70 degree, whatever room. 
Um, so yeah, one thing if I could make a suggestion to President would be stick with these small cords. I think you're going to find you'll have lots more happy customers with this cord than you will with this cord. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It works fine. Actually, it's even longer, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> now that I look at it, that's another thing. Depending on how far you mount your radio away from, you know, basically your face, how far you have to pull the microphone out, just look how many more coils there are in this cord compared to this one. You know, length, you can't really go by the length because remember, this cord is thicker too. So you're going to have less coils over the length. So yeah, you get a lot more range of stretching this thing out. And like I said, it bounces back so easily. This one, you stretch it and it's, uh, it kind of wants to come back. So yeah, go back to these cords. I, I really, really like these thin, thin flexi cords. So let me put that back over there. So yes, the microphone, because it does have the six pin, has the up-down buttons on it. So let's just take a really quick... Good, they put English at the front. If you're going to sell the radio in the United States, it's one thing. They do put the English at the front. And and some products you buy. <laughs> I've got to look at the index to find where in the heck the English language is in some, some things nowadays. I know everybody runs into that. You, know, you buy a computer or a calculator or anything. You know, you've got to go to the index to find where in the heck is my language at. <laughs> so, yeah, 40 channel, AM. Uh, let's see, where are we? Um, this does have uh, weather channels. Um... Yes, this is an ultralight electric microphone. Uh, so transmit frequency allowance plus minus 200 hertz, four four watts uh, output power. Obviously, this is an FCC certified radio. Um, audio response 300 to 3 kilohertz. Uh, emitted power on adjacent channels inferior to 20 microwatts. Now, what they mean by inferior to 20 microwatts? That's just kind of a foreign term you're here a lot of times. Because remember, President is a French company. Um, what they mean by inferior is less than. So, yeah, adjacent channel, basically adjacent channel splatter is less than 20 microwatts. Uh, microphone sensitivity, 3 millivolt. Current drain, 1.7 amps with modulation. Uh, modulated signal distortion, 1.8%. Reception, 0.6 microvolts or minus 111 dBm. Frequency response the same as transmit, JSON channel rejection, greater than 60 dB, so that's good. Uh, 2 watts audio power, uh, let's see, squelch, sand, and really our frequency image rejection, 60 dB, that's good. And intermediate frequency rejection rate, 70 dB, that's really good. And approximate standby, uh, you know, in reception is... 300 milliamps nominal and 850 maximum and of course the maximum there is going to be you know if you had the volume turned up the whole way so that pretty much covers the specs on this thing and we'll hook it up and see what the sensitivity actually is out of the box uh, also comes with the rolls I'll have to check I got I'll get to because there was a rule change a few years ago on CB I don't know if president has actually caught up with that <laughs> like there used to be a limitation on how far you could talk on a CB in other words you couldn't uh, talk skip. You can nowadays. Yeah, I'd have to go through here and see if that's still. And I'm not going to waste your time doing that. <laughs> but, you know, overall appearance, it's a nice little light radio. Uh, one of the big differences you're going to see with this over the President Andy is this has a few more controls. I'll just peel that off temporarily. I want to save, actually. I've got the perfect thing to stick that on. I'll just plant that on my calculator. I'm going to stick that back on here when I get done. But one of the things you'll notice is a little bit of extra controls on this. The radios are very comparable to each other, the Johnny 3 and the Andy. But uh, this one actually has a channel selector. That is something that the Andy does not have as a rotary channel selector. So if you're one of those people that likes a knob, get this one. If you like push button up and down, then remember that's also on the microphone as well. But you know, if you want the push button style, the Andy's the radio for you. If you like a, a channel, you know, a nice clicky channel selector, you'll probably want the Johnny Three. Um, now, this is not your old old school rotary wafer switch style uh, channel selector. This is a rotary encoder. But it's one thing I like about the President radios. Hear that? Very clunky. 
It's one thing I can't stand are radio, CB radios that have, you know, modern radios that use rotary encoders that have, they're just too sloppy. They just spin so fast. This one's really clunky. They, it really gives you the feel of an old school radio. And it's one thing I like about presidents, talking about feel. They're just well-built, solid little, you know, bricks. <laughs> I guess you could almost say. So, this is my first gander inside of one of these. I have not seen the inside of these. I don't think I've even seen any pictures of these, the internals, online. Not that I spend much time online looking at stuff. Most of my time online is <laughs> just downloading old antique service manuals occasionally. And when I do get a chance, uploading a video now and then. Come on, screw. And yes, the uh, as was probably obvious, the power cord is permanently attached to this radio, which some of the, uh, actually I guess you could say most of the small President radios have the power cords permanently attached, where the larger radios have a removable power cord. So yeah, power cord is permanently, you know, has a grommet on the back there, it's mold molded, but uh, yes, does have a permanently mounted power cord, so, you know. 30 years from now, if <laughs> your cord's gotten really short, you can't just go buy a new cord and plug it in. You'll have to you know, remove this one, desolder it from the board. You know, if you're one of those people that, uh, man, I don't know. Of course, I work on a lot of old radios. I'll never understand radios like this that have these permanent cords. Because this is, you know, this has been around for decades, companies doing this. But you'll occasionally get a radio. I'll get a radio in to restore the cords like that long. It's like, really? <laughs> How, how over the years did the port radio ever get to that point? Uh, so we do have a bodge part on this one. It's actually something you don't see much of on presidents. Uh, now it's just an electrolytic capacitor and there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, that's something, man, they, presidents really got their act together when it comes to a lot of, most of the time when you see, uh, now they're probably, uh, actually what is, Trying to see what that's across. That is actually directly across the power line. That is the power line connections right there. So it looks like they needed a little bit of extra capacitance for a power line. And that's what that is. So, anywho, so we have a speaker, a fairly good sized magnet on it. I'm assuming the sound will probably be halfway decent on this thing. So we can see down here is the main processor. This looks to be a version probably 1.02 according to the sticker there. There's our driver, which is of course out of view. There's our driver transistor with a little heat sink stuck to it. And then there's final transistor, which is that a 520 or 13 and 10? It is IRF 520. Which they seem to use in the smaller radios. When you get into the bigger, uh, the bigger president radios, uh, especially the exports, that's usually when you'll see the FP, FQP, 13, FQP or FPQ. Can never remember, but the 13 N10s. And the lots of companies use the IRF 520s because they work just fine. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to have probably our uh, right here is going to be. I'd have to pull the service manual and look at it. That's most most likely the uh, weather receiver on this. A nice little shielded box here. Hmm. I may just uh, pause the video and we'll just pop the top off of that to see what is hiding in there. Because whatever it is, it's right here and there's nothing on the bottom, so it's all surface mount. What's in there? I was going to say maybe a big inductor, but no, nah, there's hardly, there's really no pass through or through hole connections there other than the RF shielding can, it looks like. So, yeah. So we get done taking a look at this, we'll uh, let me pause the video. I'll pop that shield can off, and we'll just see what's in there. Uh, one of the first things you'll probably notice is no tunable transformers, with the exception of that one. And like I say, without looking at the service manual, I'm just going to take a guess and say that's for the uh, weather radio. I'm pretty confident that is for the weather radio. Um, everything else is done. Is done. Yeah, it's Dune, all right. <laughs> it's done with uh, fixed inductors. So that's uh, just the way a lot of these radios are going nowadays. 
Uh, and that's not a bad thing. Radios were highly tunable, and I don't even want to say in the old days, because they're still, you know, through-hole style radios, still to this day, use uh, tunable inductors, or coils and transformers, in between stages, you know, receive stages and transmit, where more modern radios like this that have gone pretty much, you know, with the exception of a couple electrolytic capacitors, you know, ceramic filters, crystals, and a few other components, they've gone strictly all surface mount, they use fixed inductors, so that would be that little guy there, there's one there, you know, one there, but they're all over the board. That replaces those, basically, these replace these. Now, there's two advantages to that. There's one advantage for the manufacturer. That is, of course, a lot cheaper than that. That is also a lot more, I guess you could almost say precise than this is. The reason they don't need to use tuned tuned inductors is this just by nature it has no no leads the component is soldered straight down to the circuit board this thing's got a shielding can it's coil it's a coil of wire in there with leads that come down to the board and it's going to vary slightly from radio or not just radio to radio but from transformer to transformers they come off the production line there's going to be slight variations to that these things just by the nature of them being so small they can really tightly control you know the the, the companies that actually manufacture the inductors they're you could say more precise than something like this. So as long as they calculate when they're designing the radio, they know exactly what inductance they need for that, you know, cut either coupling transformer or you know fixed inductor coil. They can pick that and stick it in the radio. It's soldered directly to the circuit board, so they've removed all the capacitance variables and all that inductance variables of all those wires and whatnot. So yeah, they can just get away with doing that nowadays. You know. And these are going to be actually more reliable than this style will. For starters, just from a tunability point, you have no idea how many transformer cans I replace a year because people have broken them. <laughs> they break the ferrite cores in them trying to do an alignment because they're not using the proper tools. It's kind of hard to adjust that. There's nothing to adjust. So yeah, for me, that's uh, less work. I don't have to worry about fixing broken radios because somebody screwed it up. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, like I say, you get into amateur radios, you see the same thing. You, know, you look inside of a Kenwood, an Icom, a Yezu, you name, name it, you're going to see the same thing nowadays. Lots of fixed inductors versus, you know, tunable inductors like these. So, you know, it's not like they're cheaping out. That's just technology's gotten to that point where we can do that now. We can just use fixed inductors. And also a lot of, uh, a lot of things can be done as far as alignment they're done at the factory now. So once this radio, once this board is assembled, uh, all put together into a working condition, the alignment is actually done, basically you could say computer controlled. Instead of a human having to come in here and turn, you know, coils and, and transformers to adjust receiver, the receive and the transmit, uh, you know, sensitivity and output power, it's just done in programming. And because none of this is going to change, because it's, you know, so tight in tolerance, it doesn't vary, you know, from one to the other, or over time especially, that's it. You set it and forget it. Once you program, it, once it's, that basically that alignment's programmed in, it's locked in. It's not going to change. You know, where older style stuff, yeah, the tolerances over time, they just changed a lot more. And like I say, fixed inductors, yeah, they just by nature aren't precise from one to the other but uh, yeah like the looks of it a uh, good looking radio um, if you're a you know, radio collector and you're going to be keeping something for 40 or 50 years another advantage is if it ever comes time to recap something like this there's only what one two three four five six seven oh and the one on the bottom so eight yeah there's eight electrolytic capacitors in here so let me get this little uh, shield can off here and we'll see what's hiding in there i wonder I wonder if that is, hmm, because there appears to be no processor on the display board. Where is that? I can't see what's, like I say, I haven't looked even looked at the service manual for this yet. Either pull the sticker off, I just need to pull the service manual. Maybe that's a display driver, I'm not sure. But uh, let me pause the video, pop this cam cover off, and we'll see what's hiding in here. That way I can verify if that's either the processor or is that a display driver. Looks like the processor, because it's got all, oh, it's just surrounded. You can see all these resistors right here. But uh, we'll see in a second, so let me, I'll be right back. 
Okay, so now I definitely know why it was in a shielded can. It's a buck converter. It's a uh, switching power supply basically hiding in here. So it's a BD, I think it was a 9009. If I can, oh, there you go, you can see it. BD9009HF. So yes, that's a, a switching regulator. So that's why they put that inside that shielded can because I think uh, I've seen data sheets on those before. I think these things operate at up to like 500 kilohertz frequency, I think. So of course, <laughs> you know, that filter and that filter there, well of course that's a standard IF frequency in these radios is 455 kilohertz. So yeah, you're going to want to have, you're going to go sticking something in that could possibly be operating in you know, close to a frequency range that you're going to be using as an IF frequency, you're definitely going to want to shield it. So yeah, this thing is sold. This can is soldered the whole way around to the solid copper trace on the board there. You the you saw the bottom of the board; it's solid copper on the bottom there. You got a metal can with a lid that's soldered on. So yeah, really good shielding. But yeah, that's that's what that is. It's an adjustable voltage regulator. So. Uh, like I say, it makes complete sense why that's in that big shielded can, uh, and and did did find a, another electrolytic capacitor in there. No surprise, power regulation circuit. But uh, yeah, overall nice construction, um, nice board layout. Like I say, there's only one bodge part that I see, and that's you know, honestly. If you look at old radios, finding bodge parts was par for the course <laughs> back in the day. It wasn't uncommon, especially if you get back into the 80s, to see 20 or 30 parts just stuck all over the bottom side of circuit boards. A lot of times, just the design of a board, there might not be physical room to stick something on the top of a board. So you're stuck doing stuff like that. But yeah, like one electrolytic capacitor... That's one of those things, you can give them a mulligan for that. <laughs> I have no problem with that part being in there. So, yeah, like I say, good looking layout. So, let me get the uh, little can lid uh, soldered back on. I mean, if you ever do work on something like this, especially that has a switch, uh, a switch mode style uh, regulator circuit, when you put the the shields back on, make sure you actually solder it because you that's one thing. It's the reason they soldered this on there is you want to make sure this lid is electrically connected, not through mechanical. You know the lid touching you know one piece of sheet metal to another. You want to make sure it has a good mechanical or a you know a physical bond. You know molecularly <laughs> with solder. You know from one to the other. So this shield can top is. You know, very well attached to this because you don't want anything that's in here leaching out other than the electricity that you want. You don't want any RF energy. Like I say, it's low frequency, but it could possibly be in the range of the IF frequency that the, you know, the weather receiver or the, the receiver for the CB radio portion is going to be using. So you always want to make sure you solder your shield can lids back down permanently. So let me get that stuck back on there. We'll get this fired up and uh, hook it up. Can, to the communications test set and see how it uh, how it performs. See what the receive sensitivity is like out of the box. Obviously, it's not adjustable. Now, speaking of adjustments, um, some of the President radios are, I guess, what you could say about as close to adjustment free as a radio can be. They've done away with almost all of even the variable resistors. This one, before I forget, you box seal this thing back up. Looking at this one, yes, this one does still have some tunability. So yeah, you can see one, two. Be easy. I'm looking through the viewfinder. I don't. I, I tend to do that. <laughs> I need to. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, it looks like there's seven adjustments there. So yeah, and actually, I think it's silk screen, didn't it? No, that's just the VR number. You know, I was just trying to see if they were actually labeled. They're not. That'd be in the service manual. But yeah, so it does have some adjustability. So, and having seven of them, I'm going to have to say, you know, your squelch, uh, probably AM power modulation. You're going to have uh, probably, this one's probably for the weather squelch. Um, this one's kind of close to the audio circuit. So that might be modulation. Again, I'd have to look at the service manual. Um that one, hmm, that one's kind of interestingly located. I wonder if that's actually a frequency adjustment. That might actually be for the weather receiver. I don't see one. 
over here for the main oscillator here. Or is, that, is that even a... Nope, that's a filter. Yeah, that's 10.7 filter right there. So actually, where in the heck is the crystal? <laughs> is that the oscillator? Okay, that's it back way back there. So okay, PLL, yeah, I had to... Got to remember, this thing's a foot and a half away from my face. So yeah, this is the actual PLL. Here's the oscillator for that. I don't know. Like I said, I'll have to check the service manual. That might be frequency adjustment because we can see even right there silk screened on the board. There's a Varactor diode. So is that another? It might be a 10.1. Again, I'll have to check the service manual. I, the print on that crystal's on the inside edge. And of course, I, I can't get my head in that little tiny slot that might be a 10.1 megahertz crystal oscillator circuit for the uh, weather receiver but yep so anyhow let me get her button back up and we'll actually see how this little thing performs now again FCC certified radio so I don't expect this thing to be uh, putting out exactly four watts and anybody that ever expects just so you know I don't care who makes your radio. <laughs> if you buy a radio and it has an FCC ID number on the back and it is legal to be sold in the United States, don't ever expect to get any radio. Pull it out of the box, hook it up, key the microphone, and see four watts. It's not going to happen, folks, from the factory. No manufacturer is going to do that <laughs> because if it exceeds four watts by the tiniest bit and the FCC would pull one of those radios into a spot inspection, the manufacturer could get fined. So they always err on the side of caution and turn the power down. <laughs> so, yeah, no radios, it pretty much, if it's got an FCC ID number on it, don't ever expect it to be putting out the maximum legal power. It's always going to be reduced a little bit just for that reason. It's kind of a cover their butt type thing. So let me get this back together and we'll get her hooked up. So this radio had like uh, pretty much all the other president radios, or at least the current. Turn that down a little bit. <laughs> the current ones had the uh, modern ASC uh, circuit built into them, or automatic squelch control. Uh, and in pretty much all of the radios, that works really well. Um, I will have to say, in this radio, it does work really well. I have noticed one thing though. <laughs> I love the ASC in this radio, pretty much all the other radios. I love it in the McKinley, the other little small radios they have. It doesn't work, honestly, quite as, or it does not work as well in the President Lincoln II. I think I know the reason why. It's not adjustable in that radio. This radio, one of those uh, variable resistors, one of the adjustments inside the radio, is for setting the ASC squelch brake level. The Lincoln twos do not have that. Pretty much all of the other presidents do, to include this one. And they work really well. Now, I know some people have said, oh, I don't like the ASC, it doesn't work really well, it's really busy. Well, if there's non-stop talking, well, it's, the squelch is going to stay broken all the time. That's what it does. It's really good. I, I, I compare it to, there's a little miniature man in there listening to the incoming signals, and he breaks squelch anytime he hears a voice, because it works so blasted well. <laughs> but... The Lincoln too, like I say, that one, ah, it it doesn't break as well as it does in these radios. It, it needs to be adjusted down, at least in the one I have there that I use. I've noticed that, oh, I wish I could just turn it down, the, the squelch break level, a little bit more, but I can't. This one is adjustable, so it works really well. Um, now, I haven't done any adjustments to this. I was actually really surprised. This radio was 4 watts out of the box, or a Nats whisker away from it. 
I mean, if you got any closer to four watts, you, it's, I mean, it, it's crazy how close it was. Modulation's at about eh, 92 to 95 percent, probably, but yeah, the power was, man, they're right at, like I say, right at four watts on this. Surprisingly high for a stock factory radio. Usually that's the one thing if you send a radio in to get an alignment, you know, a brand new radio, that's the one thing that usually does need to be turned up to get to, you know, the maximum limit. Yeah, this one was pretty much right there already. So, uh, as you saw, it does have the ASC. Um, all of the buttons except for this one are multifunction. This is a function button, has the little F on it. Uh, this button does your colors and also locks. So what's written on the button happens if you just push the button. So if you push the button... In the lower West winds 5 to 10 miles you can hear there is the weather channel. And if I push it again, it'll go back to C... Oh, it went to P, PA. I forgot this has PA function too. But press it a third time there, it went back to CB. Now if you long press the button whatever is written up here underneath the, you know, above the buttons or below the display, that's the long press function. So I just locked, and you can see there's the little key right there, because I've locked the keypad, so nothing, nothing does anything while it's locked. And then, if you press the function key, the net will activate anything underneath these three keys. So the color, the key beep, and the Vox control. So if we press that and hit it, you can see we changed color. Hit it again, there's the blue, and back to the orange. Uh, memory, this does have one memory channel. I know some people are going to grape about that. I can't do anything about it. That's what it has. <laughs> it has one memory channel. So I have, uh, what do I have? I think channel 12 programmed in. So I just hit the memory button and it took me to uh, the memory channel you can see is illuminated there and went to channel 12. Uh, has a Roger beep, so you can see the little musical note there comes in and goes off. Um, if you hit the, if you long press this, it'll go into a scan. If we turn the volume up, I was going to say the squelch was probably broken. Let's take that off a of scan. And then you can turn the key, you know, that, that beep, beep, beep sound, you can turn that off. So if you hit the function button, hit key beep, now that sound is gone. has a channel 919 button. And if you hit it a third time, it'll go back to, you know, so let's say you're on channel 29. You hit, hit it one time, it'll take you to 9. Hit it again, takes you to 19. Hit it again, goes back to whatever channel you were on. If you long press, you can turn it on. And actually, let's get to a channel where there's... Some talking. Uh, back down. Okay, so there's n nothing turned on. Noise blanker. High cut. And noise blanker and high cut, which is usually how I listen. I've found on the President radios, I like the high cut turned on. It filters off. Now that's different strokes for different folks. Um, I would I would sacrifice audio bandwidth on receive for clarity and getting rid of a lot of what I call the sizzling bacon or the static in the background. And that's what the high cut is really good at because that's an audio filter that filters out the high frequency audio component which is where most of your shh noise comes from. Um, turn that back down. Uh, have the, like I said, have the, the weather mode. And then you can also, if you long press, turns the alert on. So now if the, you know, NOAA weather radio, if there was a tornado or a hurricane or you know, flood or anything, they'd be releasing an alert for. Even though you're in the CB mode, it'll activate the weather radio so you get that weather alert. And then this radio also has Vox. I did forget to mention that. So if you get, there is an extra jack on the back of the radio, and I'll show that. I don't think I've actually shown the back of the radio yet. There is a jack on the back. If you if you want, you can get the, the little, I don't know, is that in the manual, actually? Sometimes they have pictures of optional accessories and some manuals that look like they do in this one. Yeah, you can get the little optional, it's kind of like a lapel mic, I think. 
But anyhow, you plug that into the uh, Vox jack on the back of the radio, and then you don't need to push a push to talk button. You just put it on Vox, and as soon as you start talking, the radio will go in a transmit. You stop talking, radio stops transmitting. So handy if you want to do hands-free communications. So uh, other than that, normal controls, uh, volume and squelch control, and if you turn the squelch down the whole way, that enables the ASC, and then as you start to turn the squelch control up, if you watch that, eventually you get to a point where the ASC goes off. So, you know, if we turn it up, basically the squelch is off now, and then you can, you know, turn it up like you normally would to for manual squelch. So, volume on off control, channel control, and then this radio does have RF gain, which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's something also the President Andy does not have doesn't have a channel selector knob. It has push buttons. I don't think that has the RF gain control. Um, and also, that radio also does not have Vox, which is something else this has. So, like I say, good, it seems to be a good receiving little radio. Uh, I was surprised that the level of the output power is so close to spec that <laughs> they usually just don't, you don't see them that high. Modulations, like I say, it's about 92-95% where you would expect a stock radio to be. So honestly, it can't be turned up hardly any. You, you've only got a little bit and then you're at 100%. If you adjust it any higher than that, you're going to be distorted. So, turn that off, and then, of course, if you want to change channels, don't forget, it does have them on the microphone as well. Let me get it off my little stand here. Yes, I finally... <laughs> it's taken all these years for me to finally get my button gear <laughs> and go out. It only took me, what, two minutes to cut that thing out of, out of a couple pieces of scrap oak. <laughs> but, yeah, I finally made a little stand to set radios on when I'm doing videos on them. So, as you can see, we'll get the reflection just right so you can see it. Yeah, you have the Vox microphone, PA speaker, external speaker, and then normal, you know, antenna jack. Um, and this radio's been on for a little while. And it doesn't get as hot as some of the other ones. That's one thing I know some people have mentioned about, oh, this side of the radio gets hot on all the presidents. Well, it does, because all of the voltage regulators <laughs> are mounted down the side on a lot of the other uh, president model radios. And then if you're talking also, you know, if you're on AM and you're, you've been, you're long-winded and have been talking a long time, the AM regulator is also here on most of all of those other radios. So, yeah, this side does get warm. This one's warm on this side because there is a regulator here. But since they've mounted that uh, switching regulator, which usually that's one thing you're going to find, switching regulators uh, are more energy efficient. They don't waste as much energy as the, the type of regulator circuits they'll usually have mounted to the side of the chassis for a heat sink. So this radio is probably overall going to run a little bit cooler because they're using that switching regulator in there. So that's actually a plus. Um, eh, it won't use as much power, but the main thing for me is that's not as much heat. So, nice little radio. Um, I did check the uh, service manual. Uh, yes, there the one VR in there is for adjusting the 10.240 crystal. Um, there's actually two, two adjustments for the weather mode. Actually, let me just grab it here. If you grab a pen and paper, that way if you get one of these things and you need to adjust anything I can just tell you really quick so adjustment RT301 that is your 10.240 megahertz reference oscillator adjustment uh, let's see RT403 that is your carrier level so the AM carrier level should be adjusted for 4 watts RT401 uh, now this is like some of the other president radios, there are actually two adjustments for modulation. What you're supposed to do is, is inject a 3 millivolt signal into your mic jack on the radio, 1 kilohertz audio tone, which is a very low level. And you adjust RT401 for 50% modulation. Then you increase the input level to 30 millivolts at 1 kilohertz, 
and you adjust RT402 for 90% modulation. I know most people are going to adjust it for 100%. So if you need, uh, if you don't have an oscilloscope, you don't have a signal generator that can put out a you know fairly accurate uh, signal level. Um, what I would suggest, if you want to adjust your modulation up just a little bit, because like I say, the factory is going to be 90%. This one's around 92, 95 somewhere. So it's a little bit above service manual spec, but it's still not at exactly 100%. Um, I would only adjust RT-402. Don't mess with RT-401. Uh, you're just going to end up causing splatter, and you're going to sound horrible on air. <laughs> um, as far as the receiver alignment goes... Uh, let's see, RT2 is your squelch control, so that's for the normal squelch. You would turn your squelch up the whole way, inject a minus 47 dBm signal, 1 kilohertz audio, 60% modulation, and adjust RT2 for the squelch to break. Then you would turn the squelch full counterclockwise, so that enable, then you want to be able to, you want to see the ASC on the display then. Um, and you're going to inject, let's see, connect for your signal generator, sign ad meter to the external speaker jack, and adjust RT1 so that the opening ASC sign ad is 20 dB plus or minus 2 dB. And then the only other two adjustments are for the uh, weather radio portion. Um, L106, yeah, don't even mess with that. That's actually a voltage adjustment. Um, but RT101, that should be, let's see, mid-volume, connect signal generator, minus 116 dBm, 1 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz deviation, and adjust RT101 so that the signal is audible. So, yeah, that's the uh, squelch break for the weather radio is RT101. So, like I say, not a lot of adjustments in there, but... That's what there is, and that's what they do. <laughs> so there you go. There's the uh, President Johnny 3. I kind of like this. I think I like this a little bit better than the Andy. I'm um, kind of old school. I like, uh, don't get me wrong, i got lots of radios that have push button for channel uh, channel changing. But yeah, I'm kind of, I like old clunky <laughs> channel selector switches. I like having you know, separate RF gain control. Um, things I'll never use personally. I don't like key beeps. That would be get turned off. I don't use uh, Roger beeps. So that's kind of useless to me. Um, it's nice. It has a memory channel. Um, be nice if it had more, but hey, one's better than none. Actually, if you think about it, you've got three three memory channels. You've got 9, 19, and the, uh, your programmed memory channel. Um, so there you go. There's just a quick review on the President Johnny 3. Uh, like I say, if you're if you're looking for a small AM only radio, I think this is a nice little one. Um, this will be you know really competitive with the President Andy that I had previously done a video on. I think when it comes between those two, it's going to come down to what features do you want. If you want Vox, this is the radio to get. That one doesn't have Vox. Um, your channel channel control. Um, I don't think the Andy has memory either. If I'm not mistaken, I, I don't think the President, I'd have to go look at the radio myself, but I don't think the President Andy has a memory channel either. It may. You'd have to go watch the video almost, or just go to President's website and uh, look at the specs. You know, and actually you can do that actually if I bring up bring that up on the computer really quick. Yeah, I already closed that window. I actually had that window open <laughs> on the President website. But, yeah, I can't remember if the Andy has it or not. But, uh, any case, there you go. President uh, Johnny 3 USA. Um, and, yes, they do call this the 1224 because this thing will work off basically any voltage between 12 and 24 volts. So, yeah, if you've got, uh, if you if you drive an old military vehicle, hey, these are great. You know, the President radios are great radios to use in, uh, old military vehicles, because that's what the charging systems are in, in, old, in military vehicles, 24 volts. So, kind of nice. You can just plop one of these things in there and not have to worry about burning it up. <laughs> so, there you go.